Wisdom of Solomon, beginning in chapter 13, from the Lexham English Septuagint. Pardon my voice, I'm all congested. For all people who are ignorant of God were fruitless by nature, and neither could they know the one who exists by seeing good by seeing good things, nor by having the advantage of his works did they recognize the artisan. Rather, they supposed that either fire or wind or swift air or the circle of stars or violent water or the luminaries, the luminaries of heaven were gods presiding over the world. It was because they were delighting in their beauty that they supposed them to be gods. Let them know how much better than these things is the master, for the originator of beauty created them. But if it was because they were amazed by their power and activity, let them know how much stronger than they are is the one who made them. For from the greatness and beauty of what was created Correspondingly, their originator is seen. Nevertheless, on these persons is little fault, for perhaps they are also led astray while seeking God and wanting to find him. For while they live among his works, they keep searching and trust what they see, because the things they see are beautiful. But again, Neither are they excusable, for if they could know so much that they could calculate eternity, how did they not find the master of these things sooner? But miserable are they, and in dead things is their hope, who called the works of human hands gods, gold and silver artistic works, and representations of animals or useless stone, the work of an ancient hand. But also, some woodworker, after sawing down an easily moved tree, skillfully stripped off all of its bark, and after creating it beautifully, made a useful vessel for the service of life. But after using the cast-off pieces of the work for the preparation of food, he was satisfied. But the piece cast off from them, useful for nothing, wood growing crooked and knotty, he took and carved with care in his leisure, and he formed it by experience of rest. He fashioned it in the image of a human, or he made it like some worthless animal, painting it with red paint and coloring it skin red, and painting every spot on it and making it a home worthy of it, he put it on a wall, securing it with iron. Therefore, lest it fall down, he provided for it, knowing that it could not help itself. For it is also the image, an image, and it needed help. When praying for his possessions and marriages and children's, he is not ashamed, though addressing the lifeless thing. And he calls upon what is weak regarding his health. He entreats what is dead about life, and he asks what is ignorant for help. What is not able to make use of its feet about a journey for gain and production and success of his hands. From the thing whose hands are most powerless, he asks for strength. Again. Someone preparing a voyage and about to travel through raging waves. Calls on wood more rotten than the ship bearing him. For desire, for gains planned that ship, but wisdom, the artisan made it. But your provision, father, pilots the ship. 
because you have given it a path in the sea and a safe track in the waves. You show that you are able to save from every danger so that even someone without skill can put to sea. But you do not want the works of your wisdom to be ineffective. And because of this, people entrust their lives to the smaller piece of wood. And they are preserved passing through the waves on a raft. For even in the beginning, when arrogant giants were perishing, the hope of the world taking refuge on a raft, guided by your hand, left a seed of generation for eternity. For blessed is the wood through which righteousness comes. But the handiwork, accursed be it, and the one who made it, because he has made it and called what is perishable a god. For hateful to God in equal measure is the ungodly and his ungodliness. For what is done will be punished together with the one who did it. Because of this, there will be an examination of the nations, even among the idols. Because they became an abomination among God's creations, and scandals for the souls of humans, and a trap for the feet of fools. For the idea of idols was the beginning of prostitution, and the invention of them was the corruption of life. For they did not exist from the beginning, and they will not exist for eternity. For through human vanity they entered into the world, and because of this their shortened end has been planned. For a father distressed by untimely grief, making an image of the child so quickly taken away. At that time honored the dead. He honored the dead person as a god and handed on the mysteries and worship to his dependents. Then the ungodly practice, strengthened over time, was guarded as a law and the carved images were worshipped by command of tyrants, who, because people could not honor them by sight because they lived far away, and they imagined their appearance from a distance, they made a visible image of the honored king, so that through zeal they might flatter the absent king as if present. But the ambition of the artisan encouraged even the ignorant into increasing the intensity of the worship. For he, possibly wanting to please the ruler, with skilled force the likeness towards what is beautiful, and the crowd being attracted by the grace of the work now considered what shortly before was honored as a human to be an object of worship. And this became an ambush for life because humans enslaved to misfortune or tyranny assigned to the unshareable name to stone and wood, then it was not sufficient to stray from the knowledge of God. But even though living in the great strife from ignorance, they call such evils peace. For while celebrating either child killing rites on secret mysteries or raving revelries of special rituals, they no longer keep their lives or marriages pure. But one destroys another by ambushes or grieves another by adulteries. But all have a confusion of blood and murder and theft and treachery, destruction, unfaithfulness, disturbance, perjury, confusion of good things, forgetting of gifts, defilements of souls, perversion of procreation, disorder of marriages, adultery, and licentiousness have everything in a confusion, for the worship of nameless idols is the beginning and the cause and end of every evil. For they either rave in law, rage, or they prophesy false things, or they live unrighteously or quickly perjure themselves. 
For those who trust lifeless idols, swearing evilly, expect not to be injured. But righteous things will come upon them regarding both of these things, because they thought wrongly about God, offering to idols, and they swore unrighteously in deceit, despising holiness. For it is not the power of that by which they swear, rather the penalty against those who sin, that always pursues in transgression of the unrighteous. But you, our God, are kind and true. Amen. Patient, yes he is, and administering all things in mercy. For even if we sin, we are yours. Knowing your might, we will not sin knowing that we have been counted as yours. For to know you is complete righteousness, and to know your might is the root of immortality. For neither the treacherous, <coughs> <coughs> for neither the treacherous intention of humans has misled us, nor the fruitless toil of painters, a figure stained with various colors, from whose appearance comes into a reproach for fools, and he longs for a lifeless form of a dead image. Lovers of evil things, and worthy of such hopes, are those who work and desire and worship them. For also a potter, pressing soft earth laboriously, forms each thing for our service. But out of the same clay he forms serving vessels for clean works, and for the opposite works all alike. But what the different use of each of these is, the clay worker is the one who decides. And perversely he forms a fruitless god out of the same clay, which shortly before was brought out of the earth, and after a little while goes to that form which it is taken when the debt of the soul was demanded. But it is of no concern to him that he will die, or that he has brief life. Rather, he competes with goldsmiths and silversmiths, and he and imitates bronze workers. And he considers it a glorious thing that he forms false things. His heart is ashes, and his hope of less value than earth and his life is more dishonored than clay, because he did not know the one who formed him and who inspired an energizing soul into him and breathed in a living spirit. But he considered our life to be a plaything and a life a profitable celebration. For he says it is necessary to procure profit by any means, even if evil. <laughs> For this person knows that he sins beyond everyone, making fragile vessels and carved images from earthly wood. But most foolish and more wretched than the life of an infant are the enemies who oppress your people, because they also considered all the idols of the nations to be gods which have no use of eyes for seeing, or nostrils for inhaling air, or ears to hear, or fingers or hands for touching, and their feet are ineffective for walking. For human made them, and one who borrows a spirit formed them. For no human has power to form a god like himself. Being mortal, he makes a dead thing with lawless hands, for he is better than his objects of worship because he lived, whereas those things never did. But they worship even the most hostile animals. For when compared to other animals with respect to folly, they are worse. And even among animals, they do not attain to beautiful appearance, so much as to be desirable, but they escape the praise of God and his blessing. <clears throat> because of this, they were deservedly punished by similar things and tortured.
by a multitude of vermin. Instead of that punishment, you did good to your people. For the desire of the appetite, a strange taste, you prepared the quail as food, so that those people might, when desiring food, because of what was shown to those that had been sent, that they might turn back even their urgent appetite. But though they were in want for a little while, they partook also of the strange tasting food. For it was necessary for unavoidable need to come upon those tyrants. But to these people, only to be shown how their enemies were being tortured. For also when the terrible wrath of wild animals came upon them, and the bites of twisted serpents were destroying them, your anger did not remain until the end. But for a warning they were troubled for a little while, having a sign of salvation as a reminder of your laws. Reminder of your laws, commandment. But the person who turned himself was saved, not because of what was beheld, but because of you, the Savior of all. But also by this you persuaded our enemies, that you are the one who rescues from every evil. For they whom the bites of locusts and flies killed, and no healing was found for their soul, because they deserve to be punished by such things. But the fangs of venomous serpents did not overcome your sons, for your mercy came to help and heal them. For they were pricked as a reminder of your words and were delivered quickly, lest by falling into deep forgetfulness they might not be distracted by your kindness. For also neither herbal remedy nor poultice healed them, but your word, Lord, that cures all things. And you lead down to the gates of Hades, and you bring up. But in his evil a person kills, but he cannot return the departed spirit or release the soul that was taken. But it is impossible to flee from your hand, for by refusing to know you, the ungodly were whipped by the strength of your arm, pursued by strange rains and hail, and unavoidable rainstorms and consuming fire. For what is most unexpected in the water, which quenches all things, the fire burned even more. For the world is a defender of the right out, righteous. Hmm. For at one time, the flame was restrained, lest it burn up the animals that were being sent against the ungodly. Rather, that by seeing it, they might know that they were driven by the judgment of God. But at another time, it keeps burning in the midst of water with more power than fire so that the produce of the unrighteous earth might be destroyed, because you fed your people the food of angels, and you sent them ready bread from heaven without labor, having the ability to provide every pleasure and agreeableness to every taste. For your provision shows your sweetness to your children, and serving the desire of the one eating it, it was changed to what, what anyone wished. But snow and ice withstood fire and were not melted, so that they may know that fire, burning in the hail and flashing in the rains, was destroying the crops of their enemies. But the fire again had forgotten even its own power, so that the righteous might be fed for creation, serving you who made it, exerts itself for punishment against the unrighteous and relaxes itself for the benefit of those who trust in you. And because of this also at the time, being 
mind for all. It was serving all your nurturing gift for the desire of those in necessity, so that your sons, whom you loved, Lord, might learn that it is not the production of fruits that feeds humanity, but your word preserves those who trust you. For what was not destroyed by fire was melted when simply warmed by a brief ray of sun, <laughs> so that it was known that it was necessary to rise before dawn to thank you, and before daylight to appeal to you, for the hope of an ungrateful person will melt like wintry frost and will flow like useless water. For your judgments are great and hard to explain, and because of this undisciplined souls were misled. For when lawless persons thought to oppress the holy nation, they were lying there as prisoners of darkness and captives of a long night, shut in under their roofs, fugitives from eternal providence, for thinking that they were escaping notice in their secret sins. Under a dim veil of forgetfulness, they were scattered, terribly amazed, and agitated by apparitions, for not even the pit holding them would protect them fearlessly, but agitating sounds kept echoing around them, and sad apparitions with gloomy faces kept appearing, and no force of fire was able to give light, and no brilliant flames of stars endured to shine on that horrible night. But there appeared to them only a spontaneous fire, very fearsome, but terrified, they considered the appearance of what was seen worse than what was unseen. And delusions of their magical skill were ineffective, and there was a scornful rebuke of their boasting over wisdom. For those who promised to drive away the fears and troubles of a sick soul were themselves sick with ridiculous fear. For even if nothing terrifying was frightening them, yet scared by the passing of the wild animals and by the hissing of reptiles, they were destroyed, trembling, and refusing to look at the air, unavoidable from anywhere. For wickedness is a cowardly thing, condemned by her own witness. And being constrained by conscience, it has always added difficulties for fear is nothing except abandonment of the helps that come from reason. But anxiety being lesser from within, reckons ignorance greater than the cause causing the torment. But those who sleep the same sleep during the truly powerless night that comes out of the pits of powerless Hades. Some were driven by wonders of apparitions, and others were disabled by the abandonment of their soul, for sudden and unexpected fear came upon them. So then, whoever was falling down there was held prisoner, locked up in prison, not made of iron. For whether one was a farmer or shepherd, or a worker of labor in the desert, when caught he would await inescapable distress. For by one chain of darkness they were all bound. Whether a whistling wind or the melodious sounds of birds in the wide spreading branches or the rhythm of forceful water or the harsh crashes of stones being thrown down or the unobserved running of leaping animals or the sound of roaring wild beasts or an echo surrounding back from the hollow mountains they, by frightening them, paralyzed them for the whole world was illuminated with brilliant light and was held together by unhindered works. By the burdensome night was spread on those alone. An image of the darkness about to receive them, but they were more burdensome to themselves than darkness. But there was the greatest light for your holy ones, whose voices they heard, but whose forms they did not see them. They counted them blessed because they also had suffered, and they gave thanks because although previously wronged, they did not hurt them, and they asked for pardon for having disagreed with them. For you provided a flaming pillar as a guide for the unknown journey, 
and a son without harm for the glorious wandering. For those people deserve to be deprived of light and imprisoned in darkness. Those who kept your sons locked up through whom the incorruptible light of the law was to be given to eternity. When they had planned to kill the children of the holy people, and one child had been abandoned and rescued, for a rebuke you removed a multitude of children from them and destroyed them altogether in mighty water. <laughs> that night was made known beforehand to our ancestors so that they might rejoice because they assuredly knew the oaths in which they trusted. The salvation of the righteous and the destruction of enemies were expected by your people. For as you punished the opposing people, by the same means you also called and glorified us. For the holy children of good people sacrificed secretly, and they established the divine law in unanimity. To be saints would share alike them, so the saints would share like them, with them, both good things and dangers, already singing before praises of the fathers. But the discordant cry of enemies sounded, and the lamentable cry for pitiable children carried across. But the slave was being punished with the same penalty along with the master, and the commoner was suffering the same things along with the king. And they all together in one kind of death had countless dead, for there were not even enough living to bury them. Since there were not even enough living to bury them, since he utterly destroyed the most honored of their offspring in one decisive moment. For although they disbelieved everything because of the sorcery at the destruction of the firstborn, they acknowledged that this people was God's son. For while gentle silence surrounded all things, and night in its swift course was in the middle of all things, your all-powerful word leaped from the heavens off the royal throne. A relentless warrior into the middle of the doomed land. Bringing your sincere command as a sharp sword, and it stood and filled all things with death, and it touched the heavens, but it stood on the earth. Then immediately visions and dreams threw them into confusion terribly, and unexpected fears came upon them. And one here and another there, thrown down half dead, made known the cause of his death. For the dreams that disturbed them forewarned them of this, lest they be killed without knowing why they suffered badly. But experience of death touched also the righteous, and slaughter came upon the multitude in the desert. But the wrath did not remain wrong. For a blameless man hurried and fought as their champion, bringing the weapon of his own ministry, prayer, and incense for atonement. He resisted the anger and put an end to the calamity, showing that he was your servant. He was victorious, victorious over the crowd, not, strength of, not by strength of body or by working of weapons, but he subdued the punisher by word, reminding him of the oaths and covenants of the ancestors for when the dead had already fallen on one another in heaps, standing between them, he drove back with wrath and cut off every way of the living. For the entire world was on his full-length garment and the glories of the ancestors on a four-row engraving of stone and your greatness on the diadem, diadem of his head the destroyer yielding to these. And they were frightened of these things, for just the attempt of anger was sufficient. But merciless wrath was set against the ungodly until the end, for he had also known their future. But they, when they had turned to let loose and had sent them forth with haste, they would pursue them because they felt regret for having grief in hands, 
and lamenting at the graves of the dead, they were drawn in by another foolish decision, and those they had asked and thrown out, they pursued these as fugitive. For the deserved distress was drawing them to this end, and it threw them into forgetfulness of what had happened, so that they might fill up the punishment lacking in their torments, and your people might experience an unusual journey, but those people might find a strange death. For the whole creation was fashioned, again anew, in its own kind serving its commands, so that your children might be kept without harm. The cloud was overshadowing the camp and the emergence of dry land from where the water was seen before, an unhindered path out of the Red Sea and a green field out of the violent wave, through which those protected by your hand passed through as a whole nation, having seen amazing wonders, for they ranged like horses and leaped like lambs, praising you, Lord, who delivers them. For they had still remembered the events of their sojourn and how the earth produced flies instead of the birth of animals and the river overflowed with the abundance of frogs instead of fish. But later they also saw a new kind of bird. When led by desire they asked for luxurious meat, for quails came upon the sea as an encouragement to them, and the punishment came upon the sinners, not without signs having come by the force of the thunderbolt. For they were suffered justly by their own wickedness, and for they also practiced a more cruel hatred of strangers. For indeed, some people would not receive unknown people when they came by. But these people would enslave strangers, who were their benefactors. And not only that, but some examination will be on them, since they would receive strangers hatefully. Hmm, I know few people like that. But they, after welcoming with celebration, those who had already shared the same righteous things mistreated them with terrible sufferings. But they were also stricken with blindness, as indeed they were, just as those at the door of the righteous one, when surrounded by thick darkness. Each one was looking for a way through his own doors, for the elements are exchanged through one another just as tones on a stringed instrument change the kind of rhythm while remaining always in sound, which is to be inferred exactly from the accurate appearance of what happened, had happened. For land animals were changing into water animals and swimming creatures were crossing over on the land. Fire was by its own power strong in water and water forgot its fire quenching power. Flames, on the contrary, did not shrivel the flesh of the perishable animals walking among them, nor melt the easily thawed ice, ice-like kind of heavenly food. For in everything, Lord, you exalted and glorified your people, and you have not neglected them, standing by them at every time and place. End of the Wisdom of Solomon